Hello to our listeners. Welcome to Sofa Fest Oriental Dance Interview, where we bring you closer to different dance artists. Sofa Fest is an international Middle Eastern dance festival located in Estonia on a small, beautiful island called Sarema. My name is Jane Gayo, head organizer of this festival, and I will be your host today. Welcome back. Joining me today is Golden Era Oriental dancer Padria. And in the first part of the interview, we already discussed some interesting topics, fair to say important topics. So make sure you check that out too. But let's continue. Let's talk about the elephant in the room. This topic has been going on lately so much in, in different Oriental dance uh, communities. It's the topic of golden era and what is golden era? It has been maybe done not so authentically and that's why I want to ask you because you have done a lot of research on it. There are literally uh, historic photos behind you. <laughs> so I want to ask advice like could you tell me three rules or tips on how to understand if the performance or class is authentic golden era or if it's golden era inspired performance? This question is very difficult. Okay, so if we thought that the questions from the before interview were difficult, well, this is difficult because it's hard to give three, uh, three things and, but I will do my best. Um, what I want to say in the beginning that if something is golden era inspired, it's uh, not bad. It's not bad. It's it's fine. It's um, dancers can choose to do the dance style like, let's say, pure golden era, or they can just take inspiration to to their own modern dance, or they can do even vintage uh, ballet dance, which is more inspired by Western ideas mm -hmm. of golden era. Mm -hmm. uh, but what I find as a problem sometimes is that the teachers or the performers do not um, do not correctly name their performance. So I see I'm a bit weird, okay, in the research. So maybe I'm maybe too much overthinking it. But sometimes when you see performance which is called golden era, mm -hmm. and the dancer uses movements which started to exist in ballet dance in 1990 or 2000 even, mm -hmm. or if they use a costume which is completely off that era, I wouldn't personally call it golden era. I don't think it's an ideal name for this style. You can do it, but name it differently. If you name it golden era inspired or something like that, it's mm -hmm. absolutely fine. So, but if you are, even if, if, if you are a professional belly dancer for 15 years, Mm -hmm. and you have never studied golden era i think people would have uh you would have tendencies to judge it the performance more from the western idea of how mm -hmm. golden era should look like and that's a problem that's a problem why plenty of vintage performances are um considered to be golden era in the eyes of uh, let's say ballet dancers because they didn't go through the through the study point and mm -hmm. then it's difficult to if you didn't study golden era it's difficult to immediately say if it's a uh, golden era or or vintage uh, just m maybe i should specify what i mean by these terms uh, the vintage is something is a term which uh, you can find uh, i use this term for performance which is inspired partly from golden era from Egypt mm -hmm. and this western fairy tale fantasy mm -hmm. okay because in that same time period when belly dance was in Egyptian movies belly dance was in American Hollywood movies and these are these fairy tale-ish movements and some dancers fuse it together and do performance like that I also like to do this However, we cannot call it golden era if it's 
oh, can we? Well, because in, <laughs> oh, sorry, my mind, my mind, because in the golden era, there were oriental fantasy scenes which were inspired by Hollywood movies, but they wouldn't call it Raksharki, the mm -hmm. classical Babylons, okay? All right, so I think it's important to distinguish uh, these styles, but maybe people are not that too much into details as I am, which, which is fine, of course. <laughs> But if you want to know as a, so with the performances, like quick recognition if it's authentic uh, or if the dancer who performs it tried to be authentic is first of all, you see is costume. Mm -hmm. So if the costume is at least trying to get to the golden era uh, version of costumes, I don't, yeah, okay, I have one out and where, which we really try to be authentic uh, with the Tahia Karioka costume so mm -hmm. at your festival. Um, the other ones are also tried to be in that way. But for example, when you have bra and belt in the 1950s movies, 1940s, you will have covered belly button with a stripe mm -hmm. or something like sticker on the belly button. And plenty of people who are doing Golden Era, also me, if you look at some of my videos, don't have it. I didn't have it because I didn't know. <laughs> it's easy. I came up to this uh, knowledge just uh, recently that it is exactly, you don't see belly bottom from <clears throat> 1930s. You will not see belly bottom uh, in, in, the, in the movies. So, all right. But if the costume is really covered with Swarovski stones or, um, yeah, Swarovski, they were really not used in Golden Era, only in movies which were made in uh, in Europe or America. They used these crystals, not directly Swarovski, but some kind of crystals, which were not used in Golden Era. They used a bit different material like metal, metal ones or mm -hmm. bead sequence. So that's one thing, the costume. Uh, then the hair and the whole styling. If, if the dancer really pay attention to the hair, um, not like me right now, this, uh, this started to be in later in 1970s mm -hmm. uh, or already 60s, like Suharizaki was very mm -hmm. famous for her straight long hair. That's fine if you, if you do time period of 1960s with this kind of hairstyle, but if you try to do 40s, the hairstyle should be done towards that. So this is the first styling. Second, music. It's like, for me, it's impossible to dance golden era style on modern music because the music was different. Even if you take the same song, it sounds different from that golden era and in modern era. And it's also because of the, the, the music instruments involved. For example, in golden era, as an example, uh, tabla uh, mm -hmm. would play role of a rhythmic instrument. It's tabla, it's a rhythmic instrument with some extra accents and decoration from time to time. But in modern belly dance, tabla became very dominant. They are suddenly not just the rhythmic instrument, they give some extra accents. So they push kind of the dancer to do more accents, more dynamic and a bit more aggressive movements as well, because you have to be sharp with the dark. Mm -hmm. um, so that's another thing, the music. But then it's important, the, the dance that if you want to know if it's really golden era or if it's just kind of like fantasy golden era, let's do Western idea of how it should have looked in golden era. <laughs> um, that's difficult. Then, then you have to, to study what kind of movements were used. Mm -hmm. For example, just quick, this chest uh, isolations, no, <laughs> not in golden era. Another quick thing, the shimmy, the, uh, we have different names for it, like it's sometimes called Egyptian shimmy or upper shimmy. It's the one when you're on straight legs and you go with your knees front and back, this really strong one. You wouldn't see it in 40, 40s, mm -hmm. 50s, 60s, you wouldn't see in in, mm -hmm. in belly dance. So that's another thing. So these kind of elements, or for example, Omi circle, uh, I cannot do it. I'm, well, first of all, I'm pregnant and sitting on the chair. So it's like, <laughs> you cannot see. And uh, so Omi circles, I, I didn't see. I didn't see properly even, like very much figure eight from bottom to up was mm -hmm. very much. 
but the opposite direction that's mm -hmm. like yeah so there are some techniques things mm -hmm. but as we discussed before dance is not just technique it's also the musicality so there are some dancers who are using the correct technique and 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 so on but sometimes there's a little thing missing and that's the musicality because if we look at the golden era dancers they were i would say they they stayed with one element one dance move a little bit longer than in nowadays choreographies ah and maybe that's actually the reason because modern belly dance is so much focused on step-by-step -step choreography mm -hmm. one lift second lift figure eight turn mm -hmm. arabesque and so on this kind of step-by-step -step choreography didn't was not applied in golden era mm -hmm. it, it, it was not again exception Naima Akev she, she was really very much into choreography and she did a great job mm -hmm. but even though when she did choreography she didn't choreograph exactly where the arm is going she knew like i will raise them up i have some some videos to prove it <laughs> um, but yeah so that's that's the that's the thing i would say mm -hmm. we wanted simply three things right but i didn't do it um but if you're a student if you're a student um i would say in general let's be let's be honest and open if you're not sure mm -hmm. ask the ask the teacher just send her a message hey i saw you're going to do this workshop is it more like pure golden era or mm -hmm. pure sounds horrible is it golden era style or is it like more uh golden fusion. era style yeah fusion, yeah, kind yeah, of fusion. fusion or is it yeah, yeah. golden era applied in modern dance yeah. and then the teacher should know and mm -hmm. Uh, then you can decide if you want to do it or not. But I think these workshops, which are actually golden era inspiration, if the teacher is good and she knows or he knows mm -hmm. what uh, they are doing, if they specify, look, students, these and these elements are coming from these dancers from that time period, we will use them, but we will do them in modern choreography. If they say it this way, it's perfect because you can mm -hmm. learn how to take the inspiration to your own dance. And I think these workshops are brilliant. But the, the teacher has to be aware of it. So <laughs> that's sometimes difficult to know. Yeah, and where can the teacher learn and also the students where they can learn is your online belly dance museum that ah. you just opened. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm not sure, I'm not sure if they will learn the <laughs> dance there, but <laughs> okay. they, they can uh, see all the little details, they can find resources on how the dances were. So if you want to learn more about the history and how the dance style developed, then uh, make sure you go check Padria's uh, website. It's uh, padriapellydance.com and mm -hmm. there's the museum, it's being uh refreshed all all the time and also you have the museum in your home so tell me if now let's say a beginner dancer or a student who, or maybe a person who doesn't know anything about belly dance if they come to your website how how they can learn from them what is like the one-on-one -on -one? which is the first thing i should click or the second one Good one. Good question. So I would definitely recommend to read one article I made. So when you go to my website, um, it is badriabelidance.com. There is one section about Badria. That's just about me. Uh, then there is the Belly Dance Museum. And that's where you want to go. Uh, well, you can go to my personal website. As well. <laughs> but if you go to this museum, there are three categories. Uh, news, collections and articles. Mm -hmm. uh, the news are, I just tried to give some news what I did on the website. Mm -hmm. The important part of the museum is the collections, mm -hmm. which is the second part. They are divided into three collections. Um, Pre-Golden Era, uh, Golden Era, and Western World and Belly Dance. Mm -hmm. And before you click on these collections, it's necessary to understand what they mean what mm -hmm. how did i divide them because this division is not something which is uh how is it in english like stone in, 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 yeah, written in, in stone. stone yeah <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah it's just how i did it with my current collection and there is immediately when you see these collections 
There is a little text under it, please, uh, to understand how I divide this, please read this article. So I would start definitely with that article because mm -hmm. it gives information how I see pre-golden era, what, a, what is golden era for mm -hmm. me, and, and especially the Western world and belly dance. Because if you don't read this article and you go directly to the category Western world and belly dance, you would see uh, this kind of photos, this kind of photos, mm -hmm. okay, this is Maud Alan, um, with this brand belt costume. And if people will go there, they will have immediately impression that in Western world, in uh, from beginning 20th century, that they were already belly dancers with brass and belts. Mm -hmm. But it's way more complicated than that. They were not belly dancers. So it's really important to, to read that article first. Mm -hmm. And then I would go to the collections and then I would go to articles. Mm -hmm. because I have but I don't have that many yet I'm trying my best but as I'm not full-time belly dancer mm -hmm. I am really working in my free time on the museum so it, it, it gets slowly mm -hmm. <laughs> but but I refer in that same article what I just said mm -hmm. um, at the end of that article I have written uh, three books I always recommend if you want to start to learn about history of belly dance. Mm -hmm. On and on, I recommend these books. I'm not the only researcher, definitely not. I am. I am one of the researchers, and some of them are really doing just incredible job. Mm -hmm. And I am basing my knowledge on their job as well, and I'm continuing the work somehow. So, mm -hmm. if I can just mention Nisa from St. Louis amazing job about this mm -hmm. time period. Priscilla Adun about time period would I have in a different war <laughs> uh, between over there about golden era. They have articles online, books, videos. I definitely recommend these researchers mm -hmm. to check out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And tell me where do you see the future of this museum? Both the one that you have at home and the one online. Where, where do you want it, want to see it maybe in a year and maybe ten in 10 years? Yeah, let's talk about 10 years because <laughs> in a year I will just, you know, I will be breastfeeding and I don't, <laughs> I don't want to promise things. <laughs> so the online museum, I think uh, what I want to go with it is to expand the items. Well, so far I have just part of my collection uploaded mm -hmm. because I have more now 350 items at home and I, I, it's so difficult to, you know, make the photo, process the photo, write the information, upload it, blah, blah, blah. so it takes time. So my wish is slowly to fill, fill it, uh, fill it, <laughs> the, the museum with the items. And especially I want to focus on translations. I, I have some, especially now, in Egypt, there is a package waiting for me with some uh, <laughs> incredible stuff. So I want to provide translations. So for me, what I want to do with the online version is to provide materials for others to learn and research. Mm -hmm. Because I, uh, we need more people who are into research. So that's what I want to provide with the online museum. 10 years with my, I, you know, I wouldn't call this museum. I call it museum because it feels nice. <laughs> but it's just a big collection uh, exposed and displayed at my house. I even don't have this um, descriptions. Mm -hmm. But when I was at your festival, I'm trying to do this travel belly dance mm -hmm. museum thing where I have descriptions to each item I bring. Mm -hmm. So that I do on travel or when I travel to festivals, but um, not at home. <laughs> and my dream would be uh, to have, uh, this is ridiculous, like I don't know how I will do it, but I wish, imagine a beautiful little house, okay? Mm -hmm. Really nice house or wherever. And there would be a cafe downstairs. Mm -hmm. And of course, it would be all this uh, vintage and old stuff. Uh, there would be vinyl records played mm -hmm. uh, of old, uh, old Golden Era singers. 
there would be program with musicians, dancers, probably not each night because uh, the clientele, you know, not, not always uh, <laughs> people come. But <laughs> let's say Friday and, and, and Saturday there would be programs. Definitely what I want to do is that the menu would be in the topic of, uh, of dancing. So there would be mm -hmm. Badia's favorite tea or, oh my God, my favorite, Awa Lime Pie. You know, you have Awa Lime, then so you have Awa Lime. Yeah, and such crazy things I have in my mind. So there would be a little cafe. And above it, there would be this museum where mm -hmm. I would have um, the items displayed with descriptions um, so people can go around by themselves and read it. Mm -hmm. uh, so I don't have to explain everything on and on, but mm -hmm. I can be there to answer questions. There would be definitely on the wall, there would be some videos being shown from all Golden Era movies. Uh, there would be some activities because I like activities. So there would be something, I don't know what, but I would do, how much do you know about some yoga and some like mm -hmm. something fun to do. And yeah, that's, that's what I wish for, but I don't know how I will pay for it <laughs> because my museum, the online version, and even this, if you come to my home, just to, just to see everything, mm -hmm. it's free donation. Mm -hmm. And so I pay everything from my, my earnings and um, mm -hmm. I don't mind, it's my dream, I love it, so yeah. So if there is uh, somebody listening who has uh, a bit too much money in their pocket, then uh, go buy a villa for Padria <laughs> or a coffee <laughs> place, or if you don't have that much, you can just go at her page and find the possibility to donate. So one day this uh, big villa will still come true. <laughs> oh, yes, please. <laughs> that would be lovely. But the thing is, like, all these dreams are super, super sweet and nice. But um, the audience is still small. You know, mm -hmm. we, are, we are belly dancers. We are, we are on and on seeing belly dancers. Okay, okay, I go on Instagram every day and I see all my friends and colleagues doing dancing, but we are still a small mm -hmm. part of this world. So mm -hmm. I'm not sure if it would be uh, livable. The cafe would maybe, but the belly dance museum only on, for people who know that mm -hmm. something exists like that. Yeah. But why not? If uh, this topic is something that uh, it's actually not only about belly dance, it's also the history of uh, the culture of uh, Arabic countries or also the of course, Western world. So, so I think this could attract many different people who want to learn more about this or people who are maybe like you said, who are already researching and they want to find out more. So they don't have to go back to Egypt or to Middle East to learn about it. They have the possibility in Europe that they can go there and learn about it. So yeah, like so far people can come over to my place. I just had a visit here on Sunday, first visit mm -hmm. of um, belly dance Luna, Luna from Belgium and her students. And it was lovely. So we were, I was taking the items out. So now it's the perfect possibility to visit me because still you can take the items in your hand. They're framed, mm -hmm. of course. I don't give the mint paper mm -hmm. hands, but still you can have it like this. And I'm very, uh, so happy to have people here that I even uh, use this. The, do I have it? No, I packed it already. The stereograph to watch 3D oh. pictures of mm -hmm. the dancer. So, they can really hold the 19th century stereograph and 19th century stereo view. So, wow. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, for the last questions, I want to hear, uh, like we've mentioned already many times, that you came to Estonia to our festival, Sofa Fest. I want to hear what was your impression on the Oriental dancers uh, in Estonia? What were your expectations? expectations or what did you find maybe weird or surprising? Um, honestly, I didn't have any expectations because I, I didn't know, I didn't know, I, I did know some uh, dancers mm -hmm. uh, coming from Estonia, uh, like 
like famous or, or more, more known, mm -hmm. but it doesn't mean that I would know how the students would be or the mm -hmm. fans of belly dance. It's always different in each country. So I didn't have any expectations because I just didn't know and I didn't want to make some, I don't know, prejudice or something like that. I was just going mm -hmm. openly there. And what I found that everybody was so welcoming, very much welcoming. I, I really loved it because I sometimes hear that people are a bit colder and stuff like that. And no, I had completely opposite uh, feeling uh, of warmth, of warmth. And that was, yeah, that was what I, what, what was the, the overwhelming thing. And I also really liked, so we had, um, the first show was the, in, in the topic of Golden Era, and there were plenty of beautiful performances who, which either did some Golden Era or went somehow with topic, which is connected to, to the mm -hmm. uh, to the period it mm -hmm. doesn't have to be always oh, if we all do only reproductions of golden era then it's a bit boring so <laughs> so they were of course dancers who were doing something um connected to it like you did rumba right mm -hmm. ah lovely so yeah so um so that was very nice that uh, i didn't expect that uh, that was very 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 well done and uh yeah, I think that's that was that was my thing that warmth and a lot of good performances mm. very much. Mm -hmm. Like even the show after that, mm -hmm. it was also filled with beautiful dances. And also I was very impressed by the group of dancers who participated in the bootcamp mm -hmm. with Sarah. Yeah. How oh my god, what they <laughs> did together impressive like in a few days i don't know two days three days uh, so like six hours in total for uh, between three different days yeah <laughs> in six hours they did incredible <laughs> job as a choreography mm -hmm. really sara wow and all these dancers mm -hmm. bravo like i was truly mm -hmm. impressed yeah Very fast belly dance evolution you know oh. it was like <laughs> Yeah, the group feeling of many different dancers dancing together. Yeah. <laughs> and did you like, uh, did you like Tsarema? I think you have not even been to Estonia before or no? Never been to Estonia. How no. was the impression on the, on the island or Estonia as much as you saw it? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I didn't have much, m much time to see and also I was trying to, when I was tired, to sleep because I was still in the third month, so. Yeah. Um, but what we did with Elisa, that we went uh, to the to the castle. Ca castle? Mm -hmm. Castle, and, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I felt, and also when we went to the dinner, when we went more to the city center, mm -hmm. I felt very, again, home-like. Home, mm -hmm. home, 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 home. <laughs> <laughs> because I, I, okay, I come from Czech Republic, it's different, yes, mm -hmm. it's different, but there were some things which were so similar and I was so impressed. I got, um, so for people who don't know, I got from Jane Beautiful gloves with this wonderful, um, how, how to say it in English? The, um, when you take... A, in Estonia, muhudikan. <laughs> in Czech language, vishivana, uh, vishivka, okay? Can translate Google Translate. <laughs> so you have the uh, thread and you do some beautiful pattern mm -hmm. in it. So mm -hmm. I felt so home like really and mm -hmm. all these little details, it was it was really charming. For me it was charming and hope feeling. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I'm I'm glad to hear this, that you enjoyed the trip in general also. <laughs> yeah, very much. And people were very kind. Uh, as well when I was traveling because I was taking plane, tram, mm -hmm. then bus, then ship, boat, <coughs> oh, still on the same bus. But in general people were very, very kind, very mm -hmm. nice. So for me it was very good experience. Yeah. I'm happy to hear that. So this would be the end of this 
second part. There won't be a third one. Maybe in the future, we'll see. Maybe we need to do a recap on how the museum has gone. But thank you so much, Maria, for joining us. And thank you for opening up about many struggles that you've been through. And again, if you didn't see the first part, please check this. And we have some resources there if you need some help. So thank you, Maria. I wish you the, all the best. I hope this uh, upcoming months will go smoothly and uh, we will see maybe next year. <laughs> yeah, let's see how it goes. I would just like to say last, last, last thing for the people who are uh, listening, uh, because we discussed difficult topics from health issues through struggles uh, with the with the dance personality, uh, finding their style, trying to be like authentic in golden era mm -hmm. and all this. I want to just say one thing, uh, the best, I th from my experience, it might be different in 10 years, but I think the best thing is to be honest mm -hmm. to yourself as a, as a dancer. And it concerns health, it concerns mental health, it concerns the, the fact that we want to do good job as dancers and we are struggling to find our way be honest with yourself what you like what you what you, who you are mm -hmm. and the same thing is with the golden era if you are not honest and you want to just quickly do golden era because mm -hmm. it's it's um now in mm -hmm. then it will not give anything to you as a dancer it will not enrich you enough it's it's a pity it's a pity. Just be honest with yourself. Find nice projects. Study it because the process of studying golden era is so beautiful. I'm not just golden era. Like it's applicable. Okay, we're talking about golden era because. But <laughs> if you want to study folklore or any other dance style, try to take it as a project and and learn mm -hmm. and dive into it and create. I, I think mm -hmm. that's the that's the best we can we can do. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, my last words I want to say. I agree with you. When I did the, the rumba uh, performance for the golden era, I had to research from zero. And these months that I put into it, watching hundreds of videos from that time, it gave me so much as a dancer. I enjoyed it really. And now I feel like I have more knowledge and I have more a better understanding who I am. So even though i did it just for that one performance for one night i gained so much from it so so thank you for this idea to have this kind of golden era night at the festival it was amazing <laughs> so much and thank you for doing this interview with me i'm very happy we did it <laughs> yeah thank you for joining us today.